Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Seven Ways to Influence and Measure the Zero Moment of Truth. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealeron. And for anyone who isn't familiar with Dealeron, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. Dealeron was named the top-rated website provider by Driving Sales in 2011, and Dealeron customers were winners of the Spring 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards. Dealeron is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. A lead guarantee program. So if your website company isn't guaranteeing you leads, well, then maybe you should check us out at dealeron.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Julio Gonzalez as our presenter today. Julio Gonzalez is Vice President of Operations at Haystack Digital Media, uh, Digital Marketing, a world leader in automotive SEM and automotive pay-per-click. They're also a part of More and Scary Advertising. As a Google Premier SMB partner and Microsoft authorized reseller, Haystack Digital Marketing provides the most advanced automotive search engine marketing and pay-per-click services. Julio's experience in the digital area has ranged from developing several multimedia project products to advising companies and dealerships on how to develop and execute smart marketing initiatives. His expertise ranges from search, mar search marketing, web design, social media, and web analytics. Julio is an avid traveler and can be reached at julio at haystack.com or by his Twitter handle at Julio G underscore MSA. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And hey, Dealeron is going to be at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Las Vegas, baby. So if you're going to be there, well, we want to see you. So come visit us at booth 1211. Now, the Digital Dealer Conference and Expo is quite simply the biggest and best event for dealers and managers to learn how to use technology and the Internet to sell and service more vehicles more profitably. It's going to be October 23rd, 24th, and 25th at the Mirage. And it's going to be a great conference. It always is. So please check out the speaking sessions from some members of the Dealer on Executive Team, Ali, Amir, and Jeff, and come visit us at booth 1211. We'd love to see you there. And guess what? Our good friends at Haystack Digital Marketing are offering up a fantastic prize today for one lucky attendee. What is it? It's an awesome Haystack Messenger Bag by Tim Buck 2. Oh, it's totally cool. And all you have to do is stay tuned and answer a simple question toward the end of today's presentation. First one to write in the correct answer is going to be winning this totally awesome prize today. It's worth a couple hundred bucks. And also, at the conclusion of today's webinar, we're going to receive, you're going to receive a short survey, so please fill it out, because we always need feedback from you, our valued audience. Today, we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also win some Google swag. So, let's get started. Let's learn seven ways to influence and measure the zero moment of truth. Julio Gonzalez, how the heck are you today, my friend? Hey, Eliana, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so glad you're here. I love doing a Haystack webinar. You guys have the best presentations, I think. I mean, you just, they're filled with great content, great data, and especially when it comes to the zero moment of truth. And I've been telling people this. Zero moment of truth, really cool thing. It came out from Google, you know, about, what, a year and a half ago now, I guess? And yeah, people yeah, read it. Fascinating, fascinating stuff in there. But what do they do with it? What do we do with it? That's the stuff we really need to know. And so I'm very excited for this webinar. And you're going to teach us seven ways to influence and measure when it comes to the ZMOT. So what are we going to be learning today, my friend? All right, my, my lady. Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, uh, Dilaran, for having me also. Uh, we're Basically, this presentation um, has several slides uh, focusing on digital trends. Uh, a couple of these slides, some of you may have seen them before, and some of these numbers may have uh, may resonate with you. Uh, but most of it 
is kind of like the same question that people ask over and over. Yes, I need to be on the internet. Uh, yes, I've read the zero moment of truth. Uh, but they don't know what the trends are, why we're putting so much effort in certain areas. Uh, they don't know what to do with their budget. Uh, their budget usually does not match their intention. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about digital core, right? Like, um, if you're doing something, what's the easiest way for you to be successful? Um, so we're going to talk about the basic things you need to have uh, for the digital marketing. Uh, we're also going to talk about some missing pieces that a lot of folks don't know about. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the higher funnel advertising. And we're going to talk about a word that a lot of people are going to listen to more and more. It's called attribution. Attribution. What happens before and after the engagement of somebody coming to your website? When they call you, what do they do after they call you? Uh, do they still, their intentions are still to contact you? Uh, how do they search on the internet? We're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, that's about it. So uh, we should uh, have some high level information in here and we'll be good to go. That, that's it? Oh, that's all? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a that's lot. It, right? <laughs> we have a lot right. to get to. And of course, audience, if you have a question for Julio, send it on in and we'll hold on to those and we do a question and answer session very quickly at the end of the presentation, okay? So Julio, take it away. All right, thank you, Leanna. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about here today is digital trends. What is happening in the digital uh, that we need to account for in order for us to uh, properly optimize our budgets, uh, properly, uh, properly go after the influence that so much of us talk about, and so forth. So uh, regarding digital trends, this is a slide that I've been having with me now for about a year now, and basically shows how much search has grown over the past uh, six years. And as you can see in the slide, uh, in 2006, 2.7 billion searches per month. And now in 2011, per month, we're at 143 billion searches. Uh, we all know search has exploded and is a very influential piece in how consumers shop for a vehicle. Uh, but it has grown by 5,200%. In fact, 2007, Facebook wasn't even around. And what this slide really talks to you about is that if you interact with a consumer every five to six years, J.D. Power says the average consumer trades a car uh, every 6.2 years, that you could understand the way somebody came to your dealership in 2006 or the way they shopped in 2006 is completely changed now in 2011, 2012, and moving into 2013. So we need to account that, or we need to understand that the processes and procedures on how we, uh, you know, answer leads, how do we um, manage our budgets in regard to advertising has radically changed. This slide here really tells you the story. Um, five, six years ago, the way consumers shopped was they drove to dealerships. They visited about 4.1 dealerships and they made their decisions by visiting dealerships. In fact, if you think about it, you know, I'm, I don't want to say my age, obviously, because I'm pretty old now, but 15 <laughs> years ago, 15 years ago, when we uh, bought a car, the best way to understand what a vehicle did and what their features were, were to drive into a, uh, a dealership and pick up a brochure. Nowadays, um, more and more people go to the internet, we're at 84% as of last year, this year is about 90%, and with the influx of social media, you can understand the number is, is getting pretty close to 100% of folks before they buy a car, they go online. Understand that the blue bar is telling you how many people, uh, how many dealerships are visited before someone invites a car, and you can see that, that bar of blue just continuing to drop, and then the orange bar continue to increase as people um, research online. So uh, the real influence and the real uh, decision making is happening with the information consumers are getting from online. But most of us know that, right? Uh, now, real real quick, it, Julio, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt, but we did have a question about that slide, and I didn't know oh, if you ahead. had the answer yet. Andrew had a really great question. He says, do you have this measurement broken out between new and used vehicles, or is this just an overall automotive kind of information? This is overall automotive. Um, I don't have any specific uh, numbers regarding new and used. Um, I know when we look at our campaigns, uh, the majority of our campaigns, depending on the size of the dealership, uh, the traffic heads over to new, uh, but used gets a lot of traffic. Um, and I, I wouldn't say there's a 60, 40%, but I wouldn't be surprised it would be around there. 
And I could find that out and email it to you, Leanna. You can send it over, over to everybody. Uh, that would be great. And Andrew, great question. Thank you so much, Julio. Oh, and Andrew already wrote in. I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. So here's the correlation of how media is spent. So um, what I do is I advertise. I'm an advertiser. So when I look at how uh, influential a medium is for my client, we're obviously going to advertise. So in the orange bar, you can see that that's the percentage of money spent in a medium. So you can see that internet, TV, print uh, are pretty high. They're above the 20%. But then the blue bar is the time spent with this medium by the consumers. So you would think that if people are going to spend more time online or more time on TV, I would focus my budget there. But in fact, if you look at print, uh, we're spending more dollars on print and people are spending less time with print. So you can see that there's a little bit of a budget movement that needs to happen in order to be successful. In no regards I'm saying we should eliminate all print uh, budget because I, we do think that uh, print it has a space in advertising. But you can see that the internet, we are spending a certain amount of money uh, on budgets on the internet, but the consumer is actually spending more time with this medium. So, um, notice that TV is a little bit more uh, up to date on it. Now, if we take that and we talk about influence. So if I am selling you a car, or if there's two people in front of you selling you a car, or three people in front of you selling you a car, which one is more influential on how they speak to you, how they present the car, do they have a better car than the other person? Um, that influence is what we're talking about here. Why are you going to buy a car from a dealership in an area and not go to another one is very is very important to the dealers today. So we all know the zero moment of truth. Uh, zero moment of truth is something that came out about a year and a half ago, and it was really Google's way of uh, telling the consumer and telling everyone how the the internet has wedged itself between um, a word of mouth or somebody looking at a car on the highway and being attracted by an Audi, for example. And then instead of going over to the dealership. They actually go online and research, and that's basically what Zero, uh, Zero Moment of Truth talks about. But they also talk about influence. And when they talk about influence, they laid out last year at Think Auto 2011 uh, the most influential uh, aspects of um, the buying process. And obviously, um, in many ways, we were not shocked to learn that um, test driving a vehicle and looking at a vehicle was most uh, influential to them. But the third one that came on board was requested a quote online. Now, we understand that when people um, submit quotes online, it's not very many, but you can see to those consumer from that small, uh, small minority of people that submitted a lead through an email to a dealership, requesting a quote online was very influential. Number four was talk to a salesperson. The blue bars are all online influences, and then the gray bars are all at the dealership or off the dealership, like TV ad comes on like number 15, right? Now, this is kind of scary from a dealership's point of view because the only area that a dealership really has control over is number four, a salesperson talking to somebody in regards to influence. So understanding that whoever test drives your vehicle, you just happen to sell that vehicle. Uh, so a Toyota dealership versus a Suzuki dealership, uh, it's just a matter of the manufacturer building that car, but the dealership has no control over how that car is being built. So test driving it, uh, it's not much of a relevant uh, influence for a dealership. So it's very important that a dealership understands that online aspects of things is very influential, and that's what they need to be at first, and we'll discuss that uh, a little bit later. Now, this slide here is from Think Auto 2012. Think Auto 2012 happened just after Labor Day a couple of weeks ago. And I, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be there. Um, it's a very um, great conference for about a day. Uh, they talk very OEM-ish type. It's not very um, geared towards dealers. But they released these numbers. And seven out of the top ten most influential resources or sources for a consumer were online now. So you could see that now for this year, online continues to increase the influence. But the great part of this was that dealership sites were 83% more influential. So what happens now is that test driving a car and visiting a dealership came in third and fourth, but the dealership's website was most influential uh, 
when somebody was making a decision and buying a vehicle. So this is huge news for a dealership. And obviously looking at a website, especially a dealer on being in the website business, this is very important. It's, it's very important to have a good website that uh, optimizes well and then has good conversions and so forth um, for the consumers to, to look at. So, you know, if we look at advertising, uh, if somebody goes over to Google, uh, when they start doing their research and they type in Chrysler 300, um, we can understand that if 10 people type in Chrysler 300, probably six or seven of those, 60 to 70 percent of people that type in Chrysler 300, are wanting to buy, sell, service a car uh, in their area. So if we go after these keywords and we um, influence them uh, in these areas, we could understand that the majority of this budget that we're going to utilize is going to be properly optimized to influence uh, a consumer. Now, if we take the Super Bowl, right? Uh, I'm not a big Giants fan. I'm a Dolphins fan, so I didn't go with the last uh, Super Bowl. I went with the one two years ago uh, with the Green Bay Packers. And, and basically, 36% of Americans watch the Super Bowl. That's like almost one out of three um, people in the United States watch the Super Bowl. And if we take the amount of cars we're going to sell this year, what is it, 12 million new and about six to seven used, uh, six uh, to seven million used cars, and we take that percentage of people that watch the Super Bowl and we divide it by the amount of cars we're going to sell, and we divide that amount by the amount of, uh, of 12 months throughout the year, we're going to get that somebody that watches Super Bowl may buy a car from a dealership in your area about 0.17%. So you can see that the reach of the mecca of advertising, which is the Super Bowl advertising, only reaches at about 0.17% of somebody that's going to buy a car from a dealership in your area. So you can see that advertising could be sort of wasteful in a way. Now the other piece too is that if you are advertising on television, the average television spot only reaches about 1.5% of Americans. So you can see that even if I go with the Super Bowl, the amount of influence and how the reach is going to come from that um, advertisement is very, very small. So if we compare that to the percentage of somebody typing in Chrysler 300 on Google, you can see that I'm going to optimize my budget to first influence online and then focus on radio, TV, and print. So now that we talked about influence, how do we align our budget? All right, that's, this is probably the most important piece here. And um, Eliana, I wanted to go ask that first question that we had set out for um, the budget question. I think that's a great idea, audience. Hey, we love when you get interactive with us. So right now, we're hoping you have your hands free and you can turn towards your screen right now and check out the question. Because we want to know from you, how is your current budget structured between traditional media and digital media. So do you think it's more like 80% traditional, 20% digital, 60% traditional, 40% digital? Is it 50-50? Is it 30% traditional and 70% digital? Or hey, are you all digital? That's what we want to know. Once we get a majority of the votes, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And I'm still curious. I, it's always so funny. when. More often than not, when I have a male presenter, they work in at least one sports metaphor. So I'm wondering how many we're going to hear of today from our dear friend Julio. <laughs> so we got one now. <laughs> I want you to know. I want you to know. Adam wrote in and he said, go Finns. So you're not alone. There's another Finns fan. There you go. <laughs> okay, well, we We've have... had some rough years. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, hey, guess what? We have a lot of people voting. Thank you so much for your votes. We're going to close the poll and dun, 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 share the results. Looks like the winner today is 32% of today's audience said that 60% traditional and 40% of their budget goes to digital. And then it's an even split. 21% said 50-50 and 21% they're more like 30-70. Only 16% of today's audience said they were 80% traditional and 20% digital. And a mere 11% of today's audience said that they were all digital. Is that kind of what you wow, thought was going to happen? 
Uh, actually, yes and no, um, but I can see the trends that are changing, right? Um, last year when we would ask these questions or we would sit down with dealers, it was more like 80% 80, 80 traditional, 20% uh, digital. Right. Uh, we have some, some folks out there that are starting to be, uh, actually we recommend to be about 50-50 right now, and we'll talk about that just in a second. Um, I am seeing some more aggressive dealers that are going more into um, all digital, depending on the dealership size, depending on the area, there's different ways of, of looking at that. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually uh, uh, shocked that uh, you're looking at about half and half here, so uh, that's very good actually. That's very that. good, very good. Very forward forward thinking audience I have here, Julio. You can't get anything by these guys. So. Good, good, I like it, I like it, I like it. So uh, continuing on with the, with the budget uh, suggestion, um, Dealer ad spend, um, it's about 23% on the internet, and then you can see that electronic is like cable and um, TV and so forth, and newspaper is about 22%. But here's what I tell my dealers, okay? And some of you guys out there doing all digital, obviously you guys are way ahead of the pack, but 23% is the average uh, that dealers are spending on the internet right now, okay? Um, if you want to be average, then you're going to be at 23%. If you want to be above average and you want to kill your competition, uh, obviously your competition could be at 33% uh, and you're at 23%, you can see your competition is definitely uh, geared towards digital. But this is the average. You know, I'm not an average guy. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm always ahead of the curve. So um, I always suggest to go somewhere around 50-50. Now, uh, don't take this uh, to, to, the, to the extent of what you're seeing here because it really depends on on who you are in the market and what type of market you have, what type of brand you're advertising for. You know, uh, an Infinity dealership is a lot different than a Toyota dealership, and, and you know, you could get into all that. Uh, but being 50-50 today, it is not an exaggeration. It's not something crazy. Four years ago, when we would talk in these realms, people would go, "You're insane. You won't be in any business anymore." But um, we we happen to be not right. We just happen to understand the trends that are happening, and and this is why this presentation is uh, trend. Uh, driven. The digital marketing landscape uh, last year, and this is what I want you to look, this is what the advertisers are doing today. 91% uh, of the budgets from a digital advertiser, and this is not only for auto, but it's just talking through retail, travel, all these different verticals out there, 91% of their digital advertising spend is between search marketing, which is the ads on Google, display advertising, which is all the display banners you see out there, and mobile marketing. And now you can see this is last year, mobile marketing is only going to get, and continue to increase. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. So you're going to spend money on digital, 50%, and you understand that you're putting your money where your influence is going to be. Now, where do we do it? How can I make this simple uh, to you? We're going to make this as simple as possible, and we're going to focus on my best slide, which is the meats and potato slides. Okay? I'm hungry now. Oh my meats God, that looks good. Right? Yeah, it does look good, right? So meats and potatoes, is right? You get your, you get your vegetables, you get your meat, your, your lean protein, you get your uh, carbs, uh, and you get a nice, overwhelming feeling of a good meal, right? Comfort so, food, yeah. Right, and it's very easy to make, right? Isn't it easy to make? You know, you just chops things up and everything and then you put it in a stew and wait for it and then it's there and uh, you could have leftovers. So, and if you get the leftovers, it actually tastes better. So, my goal here is the meat and potato of digital marketing. Okay, and I'm going to go through them really quick here. You got to have a good website. That's number one. All right, so DealerOn uh, has a great website. Uh, Amir and Ali and those guys, the way they're thinking about creating uh, websites for dealer are going into a realm of psychology behind. How do we get more leads? Uh, how do we get people to submit a lead? And they have some great analysis, and I know that I'm plugging them right now, but they truly do. They're looking at uh, their websites from an angle, from, from the internet angle and not from a dealer advertising angle, which I love. Uh, number two is search engine optimization. Uh, number three, autotrader and cars.com. And when I talk about autotrader and cars.com, it all depends on your region. Cars.com works well in some regions. AutoTrader usually works well all across the board. Um, and what I mean by number three being AutoTrader and Cars.com is 
they offer different packages, and some of these packages uh, work for you and some don't, just like everything else, okay? So really studying what they're allowing you to do uh, with the budget that you're allowing for Auditor is very important. Number four is desktop search engine marketing. What I mean by desktop search engine marketing is when somebody goes to search, they're going to search on a laptop, on a desktop uh, computer. Number five is mobile search engine marketing, and you're going to hear more about this in the future, which is when somebody's searching on their mobile device. Number six would be retargeting with display advertising, which is not the same thing as number seven, which is display advertising, and I will go over that in a second. Number eight, isolated third-party leads. This you got to treat very lightly, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, okay? And number nine is social content and advertising. And what I mean by social content and advertising, I may move for my next presentation, social content and advertising to number eight slot. Um, social is going to be a big influencer in 2013. And yes, we're talking about Facebook and the stocks and everything, but um, you will hear more about this. Um, and in fact, if you come to Digital Dealer, uh, we'll have more information on this. You know what? That's an interesting point that you made up. Um, because Dave wrote in and he said, is this by order of importance? Well, yes. It right. is. I, I can't do, you know, I can't do desktop search engine marketing if I don't have a website. So first, you've got to have a good website provider. A website that is properly optimized is going to be number two, which goes into the realm of search engine optimization. And then you could, once you have a good website and once it's properly optimized for the organic clicks, then you got to go and get clicks. You got to get people to see your cars, right? So then Auto Trader and desktop search engine marketing should be three and four and kind of combined, right? I'm just trying to give it an order. Right. And the reason why I do um, this type of order is just to allow you to, now that you have a good website and search engine optimization, desktop and mobile and Auto Trader, this is where you're going to go now. Okay. Now, if you have a good website, understand that 76% of consumers that visit a manufacturer website will visit a dealer website within 30 minutes. Okay. So notice how I just talked about in Think Auto 2012 that the website is the most influential piece now. It is very important to have a good website. And 60% of consumers who visit a, web, a, a, a dealership's website have not decided on a make or a model. So how you influence them now when they come to your site is very important. Good sliders, good content, properly um, having your information and um, displayed and your inventory with prices. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer of displaying your prices and not putting please call. Uh, that really turns people off. And, you know, having a good understanding of what will convert on your site is also very important. In regards to search engine optimization, um, SEO is still a, a great source of traffic to your website, and uh, I am a firm believer in it, and that's why I put it number two. But the problem with SEO is that it can only go so far, okay? If you're a Toyota dealership, you cannot optimize your website for a Toyota car because you have 10 used Toyota, okay? So that's why I talk about a good website provider will allow you to have a good SEO basic package from the get-go. So once you launch a website, for example, with dealer on, you're going to give get good optimization. It's going to properly optimize for Google, and that's the basics. Okay. And I'm going to go into something here really quick, which is, what do I do with blogs? What do I do with that other relevant content traffic? And the reason why I focus first on SEO basic is because blogs and other types of keywords that you may, you may go after, they may take two, three, four months for them to properly optimize and get good rankings. So in the meantime, you should head over to um, search engine marketing, and this is what I'm going to go into here. The reason why search, marketing, search engine marketing has grown so much lately over the past couple of years is that Google has slowly destroyed the space. And what I mean destroying is before when you searched uh, for a car, for a retailer, whatever that may be, uh, you got an organic link and you clicked on it and it was free, right? So you paid a company to get your SEO going. But now ads have been coming on top, maps, places, you know, or what is now Google Plus Local, and slowly the organic links have been slowly dipping down to the second fold of a page. How many of us go down to the second fold 
is very, very low these days. So Google understands this and they destroy the space. So you click more on their ads and they continue to feed the machine. Facebook is going to do that. AOL is doing it. Everybody has to do it. So the way we looked at the internet before, it has radically changed. And the reason for it is they need to make money. So when we look at pay search, we control what keywords we go after. And we control it within an hour. Meaning if I want to go after a certain keyword, I could pop in a campaign, go after that, and within an hour, I could already be showing my ads to consumers out there. With SEO, you have to wait. So having a good website, having good basic SEO, and then doing a paid search uh, strategy, it's always been my recommendation. And then you can start going after uh, other forms of SEO. Now, everybody is doing some sort of paid search, or most of everybody, and they have a good website, and then they have uh, good optimization. Now, there's some missing pieces here, and the reason why uh, a lot of people have not caught up with this is because we've all been focusing on search. Somebody types in a keyword, we want to display a text ad. Well, things are changing now. Mobile is a big player now. If you look at your analytics, um, you're going to have to look at it from the point of what is the traffic. You're probably going to look at your traffic being about 20% as an average. Uh, I'm seeing some websites that are 30, 35% of their traffic now is coming from a mobile device. That's huge. Google expects next year to be 29% of the dealership's traffic to be from a mobile device. Um, as an advertiser, it's a little bit scary, and the reason why it's scary to me is because we have to now understand how mobile works, and bounce rate on a mobile device is a lot higher than on a desktop, right? So how do we train our clients, and how do we train ourselves to not look at bounce rate so much as we used to look on a desktop. Now the other thing is too, if you are doing search engine marketing, uh, if you have a vendor doing it for you, make sure that your vendor has created a desktop search engine um, search marketing campaign and a mobile search engine marketing campaign. They're two separate campaigns, okay? Uh, in AdWords, you can have desktop and mobile display from one campaign, but you don't want to do that. You want to split them up, okay? And the reason why is that the ad copy on a mobile device, it, the way a person searches is completely different than the way they search on a desktop. And also the keywords are a lot smaller, they have fewer characters, and mobile um, ads have mobile clicks to call, that have different engagements that Google provides. So it's very important that if you're doing mobile advertising, that you're doing them separate from your desktop advertising. The other thing that's missing that we don't talk about much because we're also Google hungry and focus on Google, and Google is a big player in regards to your um, impression share in regards to your um, clicks, is that Bing is also a big player now. And if you have you know two thousand dollars on search engine marketing for Google, you may want to allocate an extra three to six hundred dollars on Bing, and you're going to get some pretty incredible results from Bing. Uh, if you look at your analytics you could see that Bing is increasing. And when I talk about Bing, I talk about Bing and Yahoo because they both have a combined. So they now have about 25% of the market share. So if you're only going after people doing Google, which is the majority, there are people that only go to Bing and do search on Bing and Yahoo and they don't go to Google. So you are missing a piece of the pie. So uh, it is very important to understand that Bing is also a player and you don't need a lot of budget. And if you actually look at your analytics, you're actually going to see that the people are coming from Bing, not only from our advertising, but from organic, they actually have a higher engagement with your website. I don't know if Bing users are smarter than Google users. I don't know yet. But they actually have a higher stay on your page and they also see more web, uh, more web pages. So it's very important to understand Bing and what it does. Now, those two are missing pieces, and now there's a third missing piece, but I want to talk about this missing piece as a higher funnel piece. Do you know that 95% of time spent online is not on search? So when consumers are doing search, they're just doing a small piece of their online um, shopping, of their online uh, education, whatever they're doing online, they're only spending 5% on search. Because once they do search and they click on a link, you think they go to a website and they start reading about the website, whatever the information is. 
So between emails and community websites and contents and commerce, uh, they spend about 95% of their time doing other things other than search. So if you look at search as your main point of traffic, you've got to think that that's when only people are looking for a car. But what about the branding piece of your dealership? What about trying to be influential when consumers are shopping for other things or just interacting with the web online, right? So display and retargeting is something you're going to hear more and more over the next two years. And in fact, display and retargeting is actually going to have a bigger budget in 2015 in advertising than actual search. And the reason for it is they are a better way to target consumers and is reaching these ads are reaching about 89% of the internet. So four years ago, when we did display advertising, we, we were, as an advertiser, we were not a firm believer of it because we didn't have all these targeting methods. But now today, we could actually target somebody that comes to your website and drop a cookie on their a web browser and follow them through the internet and display the advertising uh, that we would like for them to display. That's why it's called retargeting. The great thing about retargeting is if somebody visits a certain page of a dealership's website, I can give them a specific banner when they go back out, either they're shopping or they're just looking at other websites for you know uh, work or for whatever they're doing. The great thing also about display, and displays all the banners you see out there, it's not part of retargeting, is that I could brand the name of my dealership, I could brand a message, I could put cars out there in front of them depending on where they're at. So if somebody's shopping for a vehicle and they're going to a blog uh, to read about a uh, Ram 1500, I can display a Ram 1500 in those pages. So I can be very surgical on how I do my advertising with display and retargeting. And this is something that's really going to take off here uh, in the coming year. Yeah, I did want to point out too, Julio, that coming yeah. up in early November, I believe it's I don't have my schedule in front of me, but I think it's November 8th. Duncan Scarry himself is going to be doing a webinar with us specifically about retargeting. And that's going to be a really great one because I know a lot of dealers out there need some help with even figuring out how to even implement retargeting onto their website. So I just want to let everyone know that is going to be coming up soon. Well, yeah, and, and uh, Duncan's a great speaker. And also uh, he's going to have some great information. But I'm taking a little bit of a thunder here with this slide which talks about if you're only doing search is the yellow bar, but if you combine search and display, your actual search campaigns have an increase about 8 to 10 percent on click-through rate because people are being branded with these banners. So uh, um, display and retargeting is a huge, huge component of uh, your marketing moving forward. And seven, uh, and the last one is attribution. And it's a word they also you're going to be hearing more and more, uh, which is um, a different way of looking at advertising, uh, especially for dealers. Dealers have always gone with a gut instinct, so they do TV advertising, they put money there, and they have a, some sort of a gut feeling things are going to happen. But with search engine marketing, there is a way to see what happens before and after an email, before and after a phone call, and what decides or what makes a person click on a certain keyword uh, is part of that attribution. And when I talk about attribution, I talk about, we all talk about Michael Jordan, right, as being a great scoring person. So Michael Jordan scored 37 points last night. Well, that's great. But in basketball, we use the assist, right? So what is assist? An assist is actually somebody gave Michael Jordan the ball at a certain space, at a certain area, at a certain point of the game for Michael Jordan to be successful and score a point, okay? So just like in baseball, we look at RBIs as, you know, somebody runs batted in and we give a credit to that person or to that player uh, for that stat. We also need to give that stat some sort of an attribution. And the reason why I bring this slide up here is the majority of the search that we're seeing from our research from all of our clients is that the majority of the clients, when they go online, they don't go to a manufacturer's website or they don't look for keywords for a manufacturer. They actually start with specific vehicles. And you can see the blue bars are the likelihood to be first in the path to conversion. Okay? And what I mean by that is somebody types a specific vehicle, they may look at competitive dealership, they may look at a dealership name, but you can see all the way to the left, the manufacturer terms is less likely to be first in the path. 
and the manufacturer terms are likely to be the last in the path. That's most likely to be as they go, they'll you know type in 2012 uh, 1500 RAM, they click on an ad, then they go to Facebook, they may go to a blog, they may read an, um, a review, they may go to a manufacturer term, and then they type in the dealer name. All these areas are happening, but this is kind of the trend we're seeing. Uh, specific vehicle, dealer name, and competitive dealerships are more likely to be at the beginning of the path than at the end of the path. And this is a great research here, which trumps everything we thought it was um, correct. We actually thought people would go more manufacturer and then slowly um, dwindle down to the dealership, and it's actually the other way around. So a dealership is always focused on cost per lead, okay? And this is the, towards the end, the bottom of the funnel. And we need to change that mindset. We need to actually turn this funnel around, and we need to focus on the cost per lead, but we also need to focus on the engagement, the cost per engagement. If a keyword provides eyeballs to my website, I want to buy that keyword, correct? But just because that keyword doesn't convert, just because that keyword brought somebody to my website and they didn't provide me an email or a call does not mean I am supposed to not buy that keyword and only focus on the cost per lead keyword. If we look at the Michael Jordan explanation I just had, if somebody comes to my site and views six, seven pages and stays on my site for six, seven minutes, I want that keyword to continue to bring me those eyeballs because then I could retarget them with banners and then they're most likely to come back later on and um, contribute to a phone call or an email. So uh, that is very important to look at that when we're looking at our analytics. And the last piece, has to do with the display and retargeting, we need to start looking at the funnel, at the dealership, at, on the higher funnel of things. Because we, as dealerships, sometimes say, hey, you know what, I just want the cost per lead. That, just buy me that, that's all I need to spend with my budget. But what's happening is other people are starting to take advantage in your area of display advertising. And they're starting to brand their dealerships with these display banners. So how we look at the three components that we're looking in front right now, right now is very important to understand uh, search marketing. And the display is a higher funnel piece that it is also a big pie of the digital marketing. And then the keywords and what happens with the engagement of your analytics is very important. And then we focus on the cost per lead. And you can see that you'll increase the cost per lead as you increase your budget and as you increase the mediums that you're going after. So in conclusion here today, I know we went through a lot of stuff, but we want to go after the influence, okay? So align your budget to influence consumers when they're researching for cars. And you have to understand the metrics of influence, okay? So focus on a good website. Once you've got that, make sure it's strong, make sure you have a good SEO. Then you focus on search engine marketing, and then you start slowly understanding. If you only want to dabble into desktop marketing, just do it with a vendor that understands it. If you're going to do it yourself, uh, understand that you're going to take a little bit longer to understand it. This is an environment that is constantly changing. Um, but I welcome you to do it, and you can see some of the frustrations I go through on a daily basis. Number two is the impression share. And Eliana, can we have a question here regarding impression share? Yeah, we do. Audience, please help us out. We want to know if you can answer the following question. Please look at your screen and just select one of the following answers. So what is your impression share on your pay-per-click campaigns? Is it 40%? Is it 60%? Is it 80%? Or maybe you just don't know. Whatever the answer is, click it. And once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results with everyone. And we'll see how our audience fares on on this question, what is your impression to share on your pay-per-click campaigns? Oh, looks like we, oh, we have a lot of people who voted. Great. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. And I think you're going to be surprised by this answer. All right. Let's shoot. Eighty-eight percent <laughs> of today's audience said that they do not know. 6% yep. said 40% 40, 40 impression share, and 6% said 80% impression share. But 88% okay. said that they did not know. Well, that's uh, a little bit shocking, but that's okay. Uh, impression share is a big, big piece to this. Okay, Impression share is how many times does your ad show for a certain keyword? 
So if you're a Toyota dealership, and let's say Toyota, somebody types in Toyota dealer, or looking for a Toyota dealer in your area, and you only show four out of 10 times, you're missing six of those searches. So that's what impression share is. So if you don't know what your impression share is, I, 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 um, I, I encourage you to go look at that, and you can see what your campaign is doing. If your campaign has terms that um, are involved with your name, okay, let's just talk about a brand or a dealer's name in, in a campaign, and you're only showing four out of ten times in that impression share in your search marketing, you're only showing to four out of ten times, okay? You want to show 80 to 90 percent of the time. And what I mean by maximizing the impression is if you're doing desktop search engine marketing and your campaign is only doing 40 percent impression share, you need to optimize your budget and optimize the campaign to try to hit 80 to 90 percent. Once you are there at 80, 90 percent, then you can focus on moving more budget into mobile and adding a good impression share there. And once you conquer that impression share, you can look at retargeting. And then you can look at Bing and Loom Display. That's the best advice I have here today. Conquer one medium at a time so you can understand how that medium works, what the metrics are, and once you conquer it, then you go and find more money and put it another campaign for mobile, display, and retargeting. That's how you move on. And that's where really impression share is so important. And number three is you need to understand that focus on the core mediums, okay? Do search engine marketing, but just do one at a time. You don't have to go gangbusters and just, you know, here's $10,000, just get me on, on the Internet. Really understand uh, what the core mediums are. And then you want to focus on different metrics at the stages of the funnel. So um, understand that some keywords are always going to provide a cost per lead, and that's the Michael Jordan keyword but understand that there is somebody passing the ball to Michael Jordan, so there are other keywords that are providing that other keywords that provide cost per leads uh, some sort of attribution. So understand that when we look at our reports, we see that the one that usually provides um, a lead, there's other keywords that uh, the person has been searching before that, and those are the ones that attribute or uh, provide the assist. That's all I have today. That's all? <laughs> God, you stuck so much stuff in there, including, to my count, three sports metaphors, one food metaphor, and all you were missing was a picture of a kitten or a cute baby. That's all I thought you were missing. But other than that, wow, that was fantastic. Next time. Next time. Okay. That will be an injunction presentation. All right. Okay, we do have a few questions for you, which we're going to get to in one shake of a puppy's tail. Um, but I do want to let everyone know, if you were here first thing at the top, top, top of the webinar, I had mentioned at the very, very beginning that Haystack Digital Marketing was giving away a fantastic prize today to one lucky attendee. What is it? It is this awesome Haystack Messenger Bag by Tim Puck 2. It's, it's worth a couple hundred bucks and it's so cool. All you have to do is answer a simple question about today's presentation, something you just saw. Okay, first one to write in the correct answer is going to be winning this awesome prize today. So get ready, get to your keyboards. First one to write in the right answer gets this cool messenger bag. You ready? Here we go. The question is, what percentage of online time is actually spent doing search? What percentage of online time is actually spent on search. Stop, stop the presses. We do have a winner. My goodness, you guys were all paying attention. You're awesome. Okay, but the first person to write in with the correct response was Katie Wagner. Katie Wagner, congratulations. The correct answer was 5%. Whoop, whoop, Katie wrote in. So Katie. congratulations, Katie. Katie, if you could do me a favor. Write in with the name of your dealership and a mailing address, and that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for playing our little game, and thank you uh, to Haystack Digital Marketing, of course, for giving up such an awesome prize today. So we're going to get right to the questions. Here we go. First one came in from Jill, and she sent this way, way, way back in from, like, the second slide you had. And Jill wanted to know, on that slide where it was consumers, um, hopping online versus uh, visits to the dealership. She said, over what time frame was that info gathered? I think you said it might have been from... Um, yeah, that's the last uh, six years. Oh, last six years. Ah, okay, yeah, fabulous. 
Okay. And I think uh, the last one was 1.3. Uh, yeah. Business to a dealership is now 1.2. So oh you my see that gosh. Thing, you know, yeah. So. Uh, and and while they're doing that, of course, mobile search is going up too. So my goodness, very very interesting. Okay. Next question comes to us from John. John says, "Do you have any information on how many dealers are crossed shopped online?" We can ask when he is done. Okay, so any information on how many dealers are cross shopped online? Well, I, you know, I don't have the numbers on that, but I do, so I could send them because at Think Auto 2012 a couple of weeks ago, uh, I just got the slides from that. Um, depending on, I have it broken down by um, age group. So a older uh, generation group uh, doesn't cross shop as much as a uh, as a younger generation. So somebody between 18 and 24 will cross shop about four um, different brands and somebody around 40 to 60 um, does one and a half or somewhere around there. I don't have the exact ones, but uh, that should give you some sort of a guideline as we're moving to the future. Um, on you know The younger generations are definitely checking out more different brands. They're not so brand oriented. Um, and you can see that as the generations have passed. You know, it's always been like GM and Ford and then you can see like luxury has really taken a a beat down in those areas, so uh, it is drastically changing. But I do have that, and I can send that over to um, if we have his email address or his contact information. I can definitely send that. Uh, we we do. Thank you. And and John already wrote in. Great, thanks. And you know, Julio, you really should put it on the the slide with your mugshot. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next question comes to us. Oh, well, it's not really a question. It's a statement. Andrew wrote in, sports and food analogies, awesome presenter. So I just wanted you to know you already have thank at you, least one you. fan. Okay. Katie wrote in, and Katie is our winner. Katie wrote in, can a Chrysler dealership buy leads with their Chrysler PAP money from Haystack, of course. So <laughs> Can we can we buy leads? Uh, no. What we do with the Chrysler program, I know the Chrysler program, the PAP program started a couple of months ago. Uh, what we do is search engine marketing. So we um, Chrysler allows a certain amount of money. I think it's thirty dollars per car, and uh, they have to put it into search marketing with a uh, specified vendor. We're one of them. Uh, we don't buy leads. What we do is advertising. So we put money into Google, and we try to optimize for the keywords that are relevant to a dealership for people to click on. Um, and that's what I was talking about engagement. So when you look at the uh, when you look at search marketing, who provides the leads? What's the keyword? What keyword provides engagement? And then display and advertising is also part of that program. Uh, but we don't provide leads per se. We don't. We're not like an auto buy tell or anybody like that that would go and um, you know get information and sell you the leads. Right, right. And Katie wrote in that makes sense. Thanks. And Katie, I'm going to remind you. Write to me and give me your mailing address, please. And Mike. Is there a copy of this presentation that will be available? Some great slides here. Yes, absolutely. If you want the slides, email me at eliana at dealeron.com. And the recording of this webinar is going to be sent to you later this evening. And we're going to put a link up on dealeron.com as well. OK, great question from Michael coming up. He says, how do you look up impression share? You know, we did that great question, and then you were talking to everyone about the importance of impression share. So how do you look that up, Julio? Um, well, it depends. If you're doing your own, um, if you're the one messing around in the, um, in the AdWords UI and the AdWords interface, um, you could break it down by columns. It doesn't come with it. You have to, like, click columns and hit advanced columns and um, click impression share, and it'll show you the impression share. In fact, it will show you the impression share based on your budget. So it will tell you this campaign is not doing as well because uh, a lack of budget. And it would also tell you if this campaign is not doing well because it has a quality score that Google is not deeming as great. So your budget and your uh, optimization could depend on that. Or if you have a vendor uh, that is doing it for you, uh, like what we do for our clients, we will show that impression share. Um, so if you have a vendor, they should be able to show you what the campaign is doing. Um, that is something that is elementary and it is as basic for you to be successful in search engine marketing as your impression share. Um, you know, how to do it exactly, you could uh, go to Google and AdWords uh, support and just type in um, how, to, you know, how to download impression share and it will show you where to click and then you'll be able to see it per campaign. Oh, that's great advice. Okay, Andrew had a follow-up question. He said, doesn't gaining impression share drive the cost per click way up? 
Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that piece again, the first part. Doesn't gaining impression share drive the cost per click way up? Uh, yes and no. Um, it, it all depends, right? So if um, impression share is about how many times do I show up. That doesn't mean somebody clicked on the ad, right? Uh, but obviously, I want to be there when they're looking for a certain keyword that I think uh, makes sense for my dealership, right? So if I'm buying the keyword 2012 Toyota Camry and I'm a dealership um, that sells Toyota Camrys, new Toyota Camrys, obviously, I want to show up 100% of the time, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that the click-through rate or uh, because there's other factors, that doesn't mean that people will click on that, but obviously the impression share is something that we want to optimize for and obviously go after it. So it could increase your cost per click depending on where you land and depending on the quality of the score and everything. Great. And Megan, last question goes to Megan. In the pie chart, you said that 10% of was other advertising. What does that 10% cover? What's other advertising? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, repeat that again? In the pie chart where you had 10% uh, was other advertising, what does 10% cover? What is 10% other advertising? It, it's really, yeah, anything, yeah, anything that is not categorized. Like there's certain things that you spend money on that is not really a category. Uh, so anything out of that category, out of those uh, categories that you see there. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Julio. Yeah. That was a great presentation. We are at the top of the hour. Any questions that weren't answered during the time allotted are going to be answered by email later today. I want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later. And you can also check it out at dealeron.com slash webinars where you can view our upcoming webinar schedule and access any of our past webinars too. And uh, please fill out the survey that's going to come to you after this webinar is concluded. You might win some Google prizes. And don't forget, DealerOn is going to be at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Las Vegas. We're going to be at booth 1211. And if you're going to be there, well, we'd love to see you. Julio, aren't you guys going to be there? What booth are you guys going to be at? Uh, you know what? I, we're, we have a 20 by 20 right at the entrance there. I think it's 709 is our booth number. And uh, I'm also going to have a presentation with Patrick Workman from Facebook. Um, oh, that's, can, so. that's going to be awesome. So please go to Digital Dealer. Check out their booth and go see my friend Julio Gonzalez also speak with that. That's a great, great, great session. And we also have Ali, Amir, and Jeff who are also going to speak. And invitations are going to be going out tomorrow for next week's webinar, How to Take Control of Your Marketing Strategy and Drive Conversion with co-founders of Umdo, Michael Donovan yeah. and Ryan DeBoom. And over the past several years, the shopping experience has evolved. Customers are spending more time researching and buying online than ever before and we continue to see a significant disconnect. Although traditional messaging generally remains consistent, this message is all too often forgotten in the digital spectrum, and that's where you can separate yourselves from the competition. And all you have to do is create a message that motivates the shopper to move to the web. So are you there? But if you aren't, then this webinar is essential for your future success. You can... <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford to miss this one. This will be another fabulous presentation by your friends at DealerOn. Don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. We have some great subjects planned for you, but if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, email me directly, Eliana Raggio. Track me down online. I'm everywhere, and you can also reach me at Eliana at DealerOn.com. We're so glad you had the time to spend with us today. We hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one.